Welcome back to the John Forcade Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. Mike to tell you along with John Forcade. Uh, in this segment here, we're going to look at some of the top running backs available for the 2015 NFL Draft and also talk about my old buddy Brian Bennett, who got a call early in the week to go down to Mobile, Alabama for the Senior Bowl. So we're going to take a look at my top running backs for the 2015 NFL Draft right on top of the board. Melvin Gordon from Wisconsin. Now, if Todd Gurley was healthy, he would be neck and neck, if not, maybe a smudge ahead of Melvin Gordon. Tevin Coleman, speedster from Indiana. Amir Abdullah from Nebraska, who had a great season last year. Duke Johnson from Miami of Florida also had an outstanding season for the Hurricanes. Then we got Jay Ayali from Boise State. T.J. Yeldon from Alabama, we've seen way too much of him. Javaris Allen from USC and David Cobb, a big thumper from Minnesota. John, we've seen it throughout the years. It's been a couple years since you've had a running back going round one. I think this year breaks the mold of that. I think there'll be at least two, possibility of three. Todd Gurley's healthy. He would definitely be in there. But Melvin Gordon, oh, yeah. I think, is going to be intriguing to teams. His flash speed, his ability to run between the tackles. Uh, Auburn's still trying to tackle him in that bowl game. But Todd Gurley's the intriguing guy and in that, man, he's a big play athlete. How quickly can he come back from the knee injury? And then Tevin Coleman, because of his speed, a lot of people haven't seen him, but he is a terrific athlete, also a really good receiver coming out of the backfield. You know, Mike, the talk is about not having a lot of running backs in the, in the first round go this season and because people are starting to say, you know what, we can get running backs later on. There's a lot of them out Melvin there. Gordon. But, you know, you can't let him go. No, you can't <laughs> let them. And they said if Todd Gurley. Todd was, Gurley? Yeah, and the only question mark with him is do they go and take a high pick on him and hope he comes back and, 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 and we know he can be? That's the only key on that right now. You know, do you do you get him later rounds? You can save you some money, and if you got to redshirt him, I guess you could say we'll see what happens. But uh, if I got a chance to get Mr. Wisconsin running back on my team, I'm gonna go ahead and pick him. Just think about this scenario: uh, Seattle picks real late in round one. You know, you probably have Marshawn Lynch one more year, yep. and then you go, then you have to say, eh, I got to go with it because of the money. If Todd Gurley's there in round one, and I would almost have a sort of a red shirt year mm -hmm. for him, man, could you imagine him and Lynch kind of in the same backfield for a year, and then you transition that it would be Todd Gurley? Don't rule out that scenario. I think Gordon will be a top 2022 20, pick in the draft. Uh, the thing about a little bit later on, Abdul uh, from Nebraska is a guy that really, really played well this season, kind of a scat back type guy, but he has gotten physically much stronger. And we've seen guys kind of mature more in the NFL. One of those guys that really matured and became healthy this season for the first time, Mark Ingram, makes his first Pro Bowl with the Saints, has been since 2003. Deuce McAllister was the last time a Saints running back went to the Pro Bowl. Well, the whole factor is that you got a running back here in New Orleans that played well for us for the first time in many, many years. You know, Ingram is in that transaction, you know, the transaction now, and, hey, baby, now I'm an all-pro. And now, I got a paid. A week ago, he wasn't an all-pro. Now he's an all-pro. He's got an opportunity now uh, to deal with a new contract, and now he's going to bring that to the table. But it's good to see him. Uh, and if the Saints can get a guy like that on their club, and if he comes back, great, that helps out. But it's good to have a running back that you can depend on. And, and guys nowadays, you know, I think Trent Richardson, what he did in, in, in Indianapolis has hurt some of his running backs because you're in the top-notch pick, and you just faulted it was kind of like a bus. I'm not sure he's quite yet a bus. And teams are kind of saying, wait a minute, we can get other running backs. Get them down. They're good, but let's not waste that high draft pick. Let's get them second and third round. We'll transition this into quarterback kind of talk. And Brian Bennett uh, from southeastern Louisiana, he was the backup to Marcus Mariota, lost out at Oregon, goes to southeastern. And him and Ron Roberts did an unbelievable job putting uh, lines back on the map. We see some workout with Brian. Uh, flies to California. He's working out with the Jeff Garcia group. All of a sudden, he gets a call, come to the Senior Bowl, and he's out in Mobile, practice for the first time Wednesday. And what an athlete, John. We were talking about this. This guy, you know, he reminds me a little bit of Russell Wilson in the fact that he throws the deep ball much better than the short, medium range ball. But he is a tremendous athlete, and you can see. When he takes off with the football, it's almost like the film speeded up a little bit. Yeah, I'm thinking about 1950s film here. This kid can <laughs> run. I mean, I'm watching. I said, I told myself, you know, I wasn't a bad runner back in college myself, but this guy right here, I know he's got the size, the strength. Uh, he's got a good arm. Uh, they need to work on him. Like you, you said, Mike. Elbow level oh, a little bit lower. He drops that elbow. It. We said that prior to the show. He drives it, but the guy's got so much speed, and he's going to have to learn, too, when you get in the NFL. You can't run all the time like this kick and run. Now, 
you know, get him on the outside, let him run. But, but from the inside standpoint, he's got to learn how to get down a little bit. But if he could throw the football, Mike, and you know well as I do, if the, if they got teams out there saying, "Man, this kid, all everything," I'm gonna take him middle of the pack, and I got my third quarterback, then I got my second quarterback, and then eventually maybe this kid will get a chance to play. Yeah, I think he's probably a fifth round pick at this stage. Reminds me a lot of Jeff Garcia, similar type athlete. And uh, I think once he can kind of refine his passing skills from the pocket, and I think that's the big question, yes. Mark, we'll see exactly what type of player he is. But uh, wishing him the best because really he was a big part of putting Southeastern Lions back on the football map. More here on the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. We'll be right back. <laughs> 